vegetables to soar 50%. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from the ABC. Really highlighting the potential increase of vegetables to go up 50%. 50% as growers face the perfect storm of the bushfires and the droughts. We've looked at other videos previously about concerns with, with beef going up and other costs going up, our insurance going up. And vegetables are a big part of a lot of people's diets. I mean, I'm, I'm essentially carnivore, I'm doing carnival month at the moment, so not mine right now. But they're a staple for a lot of people. And a 50% increase in a staple is going to have a big impact. So, vegetable prices may soar 50% as growers faced perfect storm of bushfires and the drought. The price of vegetables is expected to jump by up to 50% as catastrophic bushfires destroy crops and shut down highways while growers remain under pressure from ongoing hot and dry conditions. Vegetables industry's peak body, Ozveg, made the forecast with Chief Executive James Whiteside warning that Queenslanders, in particular, would cop the highest prices because so much of the state's produce came from or through Victoria and New South Wales. He said with the Pacific Highway shut by fires, the produce was having to take the long way around to supermarket shelves and that added time and money costs. That product has to be rerouted through Melbourne and up the Hume Highway, which adds significantly to the time, cost and duration of moving product around, he said. That's certainly having an impact on what you're seeing on the supermarket shelves in the northern half of Australia. We had, there's a local shop just up the road from us, I think Pinelands here, near Sunnybank, and they have, I think it's the B grade stock, and it is so cheap. It is so cheap because, you know, we have got the farmer's market for the whole city, just the, you know, the fruit and veg market. And it's much cheaper than what they're selling at the fruit and veg market there. You know, I'm at the point now because when we first started going on keto, I couldn't, I couldn't justify paying more than 30 cents for a cauliflower. You know, this is only a year ago. And you get it all to, to cheap. So that's kind of what we're, we're used to. We're used to. So I think you got to be smart with with where you go shopping. I know there's some trendy fruit and veg places in the city that cost a lot. There are some advantages to living in the suburbs. So. That's certainly having an impact on what you're seeing on the supermarket shelves in the northern half of the country. So which vegetables will be worst affected? Mr. Whiteside said the prices of pretty well everything will go up, including cauliflower, broccoli, green leafy vegetables, including rocket and spinach and root vegetables such as potatoes and pumpkins. A lot of these product, those products were grown in Queensland have been sourcing out of southern states, which they typically do this time of year, having been severely Im impacted, he said. He said the size of the price rise would depend on the product and where the fresh food has come from. I wouldn't be surprised to see prices moving up between 20% and 50%, he said. Those sort of larger increases are unlikely to be sustainable, but consumers will see a range of higher prices across pretty well everything. Who will feel the pinch? The closure of a critical arterial road between Queensland and Southern States has been mirrored on the other side of the continent. The only sealed road connecting Western Australia and South Australia, the Air Highway, was closed for 12 days over the New Year period trapping trucks and travellers on either side of the Nullarbor Plain. At the time, Adelaide truck driver Glenn Freestone said the closure had crippled the transport industry. Out of the past month, I've been stuck for 22 days, he said. The Ozveg boss said that had to have an impact. There's been some significant disruption here, Mr Whiteside said. The base and East Gippsland regions in Victoria are the ones that have been substantially impacted by interruptions to the supply chain. And for those relying on Queensland produce, the drought means less produce being sent into state, so the price of those products is also likely to go up. 
Just this on just this ongoing drought meant that the prospects for the next couple of months to put a product out of the Lockyer Valley and up the, the Queensland coast, it's likely the volumes will be down if we don't get substantial rainfall for the next six or twelve weeks, Mr. Whiteside said. Well, for the last two days, we've seen some decent rainfall here in Queensland. I'm hoping it'll reach reach the val valley there and you know, quench some of the crop capacity. So what can buyers do? Mr. Whiteside said it was important for buyers to understand and appreciate why prices were higher. He said buyers and tellers both had a role to play in supporting the growers hit by fire and drought. Our message to the supermarkets is to try wherever possible to shield consumers from higher costs they might be paying, but also to consumers. If you want to help growers, be prepared to pay a slightly higher price because many growers are going through a pretty tough time at the moment. It's one way we can support those growers to pay a slightly higher price and perhaps accept a quality that isn't quite as fantastic as we used to. That's an interesting point there because there's a lot of food wasted. There's a lot of food wastage that we have in this sector. So there you have it, guys. A potential increase in fruit and veg here in Australia by up to 50%. So let's have a look at some of the key points. So James Whiteside, chief of the of the vegetable industry's peak body, says the prices are pretty, are pretty well anything will go up. The price rise will depend on the product and where the fresh food has come from. The Oz Veg chief says Queenslanders in particular will cop the highest price. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at Oz Veg here. And you know, I brought them up. So the industry representative body for vegetable and potato growers. They do advocacy. Let's see what their upcoming events are. Their events well, they've got nothing for January. Okay, <laughs> February. So getting started. Fruit Logistica. Okay, so they've got a whole series of events here. So it's an industry body representing uh, the vegetable growers here in Australia. Sprouting out, growing a bit of future. future. Oz Veg is the prescribed peak industry body for the Australian vegetable and potato industries. We identify and prioritize the issues our members and advocate on behalf of growers to ensure their needs are are heard and understood by decision makers. As a peak industry body, we have an important facilitating role in driving innovation and bringing disparity, disparate groups together where there is common purpose. We are able to leverage our industry experience and expertise using our extensive government networks, partnerships with leading agribusinesses, a strong relationship with other industry bodies, including other state members, and knowledge sharing with research organizations. In our advocacy work, we push for the best results for Australian growers, both in the vegetable and potato industries and across all of the horticulture sectors. So, I mean, there we have it. This is OzVeg, they're advocating for that. They're, let's, let's have a look. General issues. Bushfire support. Submissions to the RDC review. Inquiry into growing Australian agriculture into 100 billion by 2030. Australian, New Zealand Food Standards Code of co uh, Comments. So, I mean, they look like they're pretty active. Let's see, are they going to talk anywhere here about water? Let's just do a search. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Standing Committee on Agriculture and Water Resources. Osvedge submission to the Standing Committee on Agriculture and Water Resources. Inquiry into growing Australian agriculture by 100 billion by 2030. So, I... I've just discovered this. I think it's probably worth another video to look into the standing committee and what submissions this organization made. So they want to improve horticultural access, increase domestic demand for fruit, increase domestic demand for fruit and vegetables, continued investment into export markets, supporting Australia's biosecurity, encouraging the adoption of world leading local and international research, secure adequate supply of affordable energy and water. Well, Good to see they're on the right track there. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Will this make an adjustment to how you are purchasing your fruit and vegetables? And, uh, or are you just going to go carnival for a month if it's too expensive? But then again, beef's going to go up too. 
Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. If you're a fan of the channel and want to help us produce more, I have a Patreon where you can make a small monthly donation. We also have the ability for you to join the channel here on YouTube, where you can receive access to emojis and badges. We have affiliate links for Independent Reserve, for your crypto traders, for eBay and Amazon for consumer purchases. You can also make donations at PayPal and purchase our pocket squares from our website. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I will talk to you later. Bye for now.